Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I am Ben, and this is the Gretsch Jack Antonoff Signature Princess Antonoff CVT Electromatic Guitar. Let's get into it. Did I get that right? I haven't done a Gretsch guitar review yet, but when this thing popped up in my feed, I said, I've got to get my hands on one of those. And I'll be the first to admit that I don't really know a lot about Jack Antonoff. I've seen his name pop up every once in a while when I'm reading various articles about recording or producing and things like that, but this was definitely a surprise that I saw this guitar was his signature model. Now, as far as I know, the story with this guitar is Gretsch basically came to Jack Antonoff and said, hey, you have carte blanche to do whatever you want. We just want to work with you you know, within reason, let's see what you can come up with. And Jack kind of gave it a quick think and said he wanted to hybrid his two favorite guitars together, which were the Gretsch Princess and the Fender Jazzmaster. And that's kind of where we get this interesting hybrid of a guitar here. Well, if you're familiar with the Gretsch Corvette or the Gretsch CVT as it was known later, you might be wondering, what's the whole deal with the Princess? Well, the Princess is a Corvette. It's actually just a victim of a terrible marketing scheme from Gretsch. So in 1961, Gretsch released the Corvette model to compete with the Les Paul Jr. And indeed, it had a slab body and a single pickup, just like the Jr. Now later, the same year that Gretsch released the Corvette, Gibson famously reintroduced the Les Paul as the stylish and carved SG model. And it's believed that that's kind of what gave Gretsch the final push to reintroduce the Corvette just one year after it came out originally as the carved and sculpted model as we know it today, and of course to compete with the SG style Les Paul. Now this is where the Princess moniker comes in. The marketing team at Gretsch thought it would be pretty genius to, for the first time ever, release a guitar specifically for the feminine guitarist. And they call this feminine version of the Corvette guitar the Princess. As they say in this advertisement, it's a guitar unmistakably hers. Now what this entails, of course, is that the finishes were now available in specific pastel options. You had white with a grape or a gold pickguard. White and gold is what this one takes its cues off of. Then you had a blue with a white pick guard, and you also had a pink with a white pick guard available. And it's also possible that the Princess model might have been a shorter scale guitar. I've seen various reports that say no, it was the exact same as the regular Corvette, and other people that claim it was a 22 and a half inch scale as opposed to Gretsch's normal 24.6 inch scale. If some of you out there have a Princess model and you don't mind taking some measurements and letting me know, I'm very curious about this. Now, along with the girly finish options the guitar came in, Gretsch also put a cushioned pad on the backside because why not? Unfortunately, Gretsch's great hope that women all around the world would flock to the music stores to pick up their first electric guitar ever never really came to be and Gretsch canceled the model just a year later. Now that's the Gretsch side of this Princess Antonov guitar and then obviously as mentioned before, the other half of it is inspired heavily by a Fender Jazzmaster. And what I mean by that is you've got the Jazzmaster trim system here as well as the Jazzmaster alternate controls for the neck pickup. Along with that, we've got the Fender 25 and a half inch scale, whereas the Corvette was also normally 24.6 inches. And also like a Jazzmaster, the neck is a bolt-on on this guitar, whereas previous iterations of the Corvette, the neck was a set neck. Now, interestingly enough, Gretsch did decide to keep the three on a side headstock here. I kind of wish they would have gone with that funky Gretsch two and four headstock that they had for a while. I think that was a little bit more reminiscent of a traditional jazz master headstock. It's obviously completely different, but I think it looks the part a little bit better. Whatever, that's just what I want. Now let's take a look at the unboxing from earlier today. So it's pretty tight packaging here. The guitar has a slip-on foam sheath kind of thing and just stuffed into this foam fitting in the box. There's not much in the way of case candy here though. It looks like we've got a Gretsch quality control card, a warranty card, a few Allen keys to adjust things like the truss rod and the bridge height and the trim bar. Now when it comes to the price of the Princess Antonov guitar, you're looking at about 700 bucks right now. Kind of right smack dab in the middle of Gretsch's Chinese made guitars usually average somewhere between $400 and $1,000. I think feature-wise, it's not really a bad deal. I do think also the fact that they've got it as a signature model means they can probably squeeze an extra 100 bucks out of you. Kind of neat that it's a unique design, which is something that I'm a big fan of. I will say, however, though, I think for 700 bucks, it could have at least come with even the dirt cheapest gig bag. Also, know there's other people out there that would rather not have another gig bag in their closet. Personally, I think it's just a bang for your buck deal. And if you ever do sell it, it's nice to have a bag to offer it off to somebody and say, here you go. It's been protected in this bag the whole time. Now this guitar sports a solid alder body, and I gotta tell you, it's got quite a bit of it routed out for all of these controls along with the Fender series of controls there as well. Pretty much 
everything underneath this pickguard is wide open, so it's a very resonant guitar. Now Gretsch has certainly taken some liberties with the carving as well. They've certainly made some changes to make it a little bit bigger in certain areas and maybe a little more carved in other areas, and I think some of that has to do with the fact that on the back side of this guitar, where as it was a set neck before, it looked kind of like a PRS CE24 where the horns kind of just met as one big semicircle kind of going on there, whereas now you have this extra little hump here for these bolts. Now, there was another version of the Corvette that came out that also had a bolt on neck, but for whatever reason, that one's still bolted underneath the pickups, whereas this one, they decided to add this little heel here for your hand to rest on or whatever. I'm, I'm curious why they went with that option as opposed to having the bolts over here like they've done in the past, but I don't think I'll ever get that answer. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is this finish is known as the vintage white finish, and as you can see, Gretsch has modeled this color after a guitar that's been sitting in a club for about 40 or 50 years soaking up cigarette smoke, but I do actually think it's kind of a nice color. It's very interesting that the binding on the guitar is still very new, so it's a very bright white binding, but then you do have this aged white look on the body, but other than that, I think it's a really nice color and I like that they matched it with the insert here in the pickups that's pretty cool and then also you've got the matching headstock and I think this is a nice touch is having the matching truss rod cover that goes along with the giant pick guard here this is a bolt-on maple neck as mentioned before complete with a rosewood fretboard in case you're curious the fretboard radius is a tight 7.25 inches now Gretsch says that this neck is a satin finish and yeah it is actually a very smooth finish to your hand you can kind of glide right along it, which is very nice. Now moving on to the measurements of this neck, well the nut's coming in at about 1.61, which is a pretty narrow nut. Now moving on to the first fret here, I get a 0.83, and up here at the 12th fret I'm getting a 0.90, so just a gentle rise there between the first and the 12th. Now Gretsch literature officially says that this is a C-shaped neck, but we know that that can mean a lot of things. What I think it kind of reminds me of is a really soft C, like almost barely a, a C, and I'll, I'll kind of draw it here on the screen so you have an idea of what I think it looks like anyway. Now moving on to the hardware, we'll start here at the bottom. We've got, of course, a strap button on the bottom, a strap button on the top. These are kind of like the everyday strap buttons you see on fenders and gretches and epiphones. Just over from the strap buttons, we get to a nice metal jack plate there. I quite like that. I'm glad that it's on the side of the guitar. Big fan of those. Now just up from there we get to the Fender Jazzmaster trim system. It's 100% identical in every way, with the exception being that it does not have Fender written on the front, but otherwise it functions identical to that. You get your nice, soft, gentle trim, like your surf music trim, right? And then it's also got the lock for it. Now, I had not known what the lock was for. I don't really mess with Jazzmasters that much, but if you don't know what it's for, this is what I've learned anyway, is that right now you can bend forward or back. But if you engage the lock, it's basically like putting a block on your guitar, and now it won't go back, but you can still bend forward. Which is good, you know, if you want to do drop D tuning, or maybe you can put it like that, and if you break a string, the guitar won't go all out of whack and have weird tuning. Next up from there we get to the Jazzmaster Rocking Bridge, and everything I've read about this basically seems to indicate that people either love the vintageness of it or they just say you should upgrade that to something a little more reliable and I kind of see what they mean after playing the guitar for a while. For instance, if you were to bend it one way or the other or maybe bump it with your hand, it will actually lock. Unfortunately, the tension of the strings is not enough to keep it wanting to sit in the middle of this weird unique design and I guess what I've learned though is that back when they designed this bridge people were using 13 and 14 strings and the G string was also wound so there was considerably more tension on the bridge. It kind of kept it in line a little bit better and we don't really have that now. I mean for instance this guitar I think is on 9 through 42 strings which is substantially lighter than you know 13s with four of those strings being wound. So as a result it does shift around a little bit, but it hasn't really been a problem. What I do find to be a problem is also something else that people have been complaining about, which is strings have a tendency to just sort of pop out of these saddles. And I guess maybe that's just a Jazzmaster thing. I'm not too sure, but uh, I know a lot of you guys are Jazzmaster players, so 
Let me know what you think about all this because, you know, I mostly play Gibsons and as we all know, those have their own set of problems. So these are new problems that I'm just getting familiar with. Now, from there we get to the two Gretsch pickups. These are the Gretsch Custom Fidelisonic pickups. They say that these are custom wound. Now, I did look for any indication if these were custom wound for this guitar or if these were custom wound like the other custom wound pickups that are on their other guitars. Is it the same exact pickup or are these specific to this one? I don't have that information, unfortunately, but I can give you the readings on these pickups. Now for the bridge pickup, what I'm getting is a 9.28. Moving up to the neck pickup, I get a 8.13. And lastly, in the middle, I get a 4.37 reading. Now, just in case you're curious, I do get the same reading, of course, whether I'm in the conventional mode or if I switch it to the Jazz Master neck pickup mode. Now, moving on from there, we get to our controls here. Now we've got two sets of controls, just like a Jazz Master. Well, sort of two sets of controls. You've got the one set of controls that controls the bridge and the neck pickup, complete with your master volume and your master tone knob, but then you can switch it into the neck only mode with this little toggle switch here. And now you've got just control of the neck pickup where this is your volume and this is your tone. Now, if you're like me, I didn't really know anything about Jazz Masters until maybe sometime earlier this year. And I'd always been curious why they would have this redundant system. And I didn't realize that it's actually a completely different circuit. There's different pots here underneath these two knobs. The pots have different values. They've got different capacitors. And as a result, you do get some different sounds out of your neck pickup than you do if you're doing it down here. And I'll show you in this example. You can see that when I'm on the conventional mode in the neck pickup and I roll the tone down. it's considerably more dramatic. It gets a lot darker and a lot muddier. If I move it to the neck pickup only mode and I roll down the tone. It's a bit brighter and still has a little bit more nuance to it. And one of the interviews I read with Jack Antonoff, one of the things he likes in particular about the Jazz Master system is it reminds him of messing with like an old analog synthesizer where you can kind of find a sound that you like, but there's no way to store that. So once you move all these knobs, you're not really going to ever know where you were at before because they're unlabeled and they're just sort of like these faceless black knobs that roll. It's not like these knobs have any numbers on them. I guess you can see where the arrow's pointing. I get what he's going for. I don't think it's as mysterious as he's making it sound like, but hey, if that works for him, then that's great. Now, one thing that I have read that's nice about the system is you can kind of preset whatever settings you want. So if you're in like a live setting and you know that you like this neck pickup here, and let's say you figured it out during sound check or whatever, you can then go back to your conventional mode and you've got all your normal controls, and then let's say you've got this neck lead coming up, you can just slap it into there and it's ready to go based on what you've set these other volume and tone knobs at, and you don't have to kind of find the tone while you're there. And then once you're out, you can just snap it back into the normal system. And that makes the most sense to me for the Jazz Master system. But I also know that there's a lot of players out there that kind of think it's a stupid, redundant system. And I've noticed that Fender's even removed the neck circuit on a lot of their Jazz Masters of late. Now moving up from there, we get to our kill switch here. Now Jack Antonoff says he just kind of wanted to add it so that he had more flexibility when he was playing live. Like maybe out of nowhere, he just wants to start giving a speech and his guitar's buzzing or whatever. He can just kill the guitar, make his speech, and then get back into playing. And I guess he wants to have complete control as opposed to leaving it to a board op somewhere across the room. <laughs> And moving up from there, we get to our frets. Now these are 22 medium jumbo frets on this guitar and they're measuring somewhere around 44 thousandths in height, which is pretty standard these days. Now moving up from there, we get to our truss rod and you've seen this truss rod before. You need a hex wrench to adjust it. Nothing too special there. And then lastly, we get to our Gretsch unmarked tuners here. Now this is what Gretsch is calling their vintage style tuners. In case you're curious about the tuning ratio, these come in at 15 to one. They actually feel pretty decent. No complaints from me. Moving on to the other features of this guitar here, well, of course, we've got our match switch tip, we've got the tip of our trem bar, we've got our pickup inserts, and then, of course, the headstock. Pretty nice design there, I think. It's a little interesting to me that the kill switch is black, but I guess maybe that's to blend in more with the Fender side of things. It looks like Fender always does black switches for their Jazzmaster controls anyway. So we've got this really nice gold pick guard here. I kind of like it. I know it's huge, but I think it's a good look on this guitar. And then moving up from there, we get to the Gretsch Neo Classic or thumbnail inlays. 
I've always liked these until I think of them as thumbnails and I just imagine somebody clipping their thumbnails and gluing them and I don't know, it sounds like something out of seven. It's pretty gross. And then right next to that, we get to our white binding here. I've already mentioned that it's a brand new white binding, which is the only thing I find a little bit odd about the look of the guitars. You have this vintage white color, but then you've got this brand new bright white binding here. But other than that, inside of the white binding, you've got your dot fret markers there, of course, lined up with the thumbnail markers. Moving up from there, we get to our nut. Now this guitar has a bone nut and I'm a big fan of that. I'm glad that they stuck with something pretty decent there instead of using like a cheap plastic. And then up from there, we get to our gold truss rod cover, which matches, of course, our pick guard. Up at the very top there, we've got the Gretsch logo in gold. Pretty sharp looking guitar all in all, I think. Now, weight wise, this guitar is coming in at 8.33 pounds or eight pounds and about five ounces. So it's not exactly the lightest guitar on the block. Now, if you're curious about the neck dive, as I am with the strap button being on the inside of the horn, well, let's give that a shot and see what it looks like. Yep, zero neck dive whatsoever. So now I'm gonna go into the sound test here and I'll put all my settings right here on the side so you can see just exactly how I'm making the sounds that I am making. Now before I do the sound test, one of the questions that comes up a lot is, well, what are you using for your amp and your pedals? And the truth is since about four months ago, I've been using the exact same settings for every single review that I've done. So if I'm playing this bridge pickup 10 and 10 and you go back and you look at the Gibson Victory review I did two months ago or whenever that was, and you see I'm doing the bridge pickup at 10 and 10, well, that is just Guitar for guitar, sound to sound, and the back end is completely the same. The only thing that you're hearing different is this pickup versus that pickup. Now to answer the specifics of that question, it is a Fender Twin Reverb. If it's clean, it's just the amp. If you hear it a little bit overdriven, I'm using a Klon clone, and that is the Tumnus pedal. And if you hear it completely dirty, then that is also going through a Tube Screamer. And that is all that I use for all my sounds. Now let's get into the sound test.
Well, there you have it. Now let's start with the pros of this guitar. First of all, it's a pretty cool guitar. I think it's very versatile. I love the fact that you've got this Jazz Master system here. I think that the pickups are very cool sounding. The guitar came very well set up. It's actually a lot of fun to play. And I was thinking about this about two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, I did a video on the Telecaster SJ, which was a Telecaster on a Jazz Master body. And I was thinking I would keep that because it was a lot of fun. Well, now I've got this guitar and I think I'm gonna get rid of that one and I'll keep this one in its place, which is not a Telecaster, which is a great guitar. I think it's more fun to have the Jazzmaster toys than the Telecaster toys, at least for a unique one-off guitar. What do you guys think about that? Now, another pro that I'll say about this guitar is it came set up really well. The only thing that I changed on this guitar when I got it was swapping the strings out for my preferred strings, which actually gives me a good opportunity to shout out Stringjoy, who always helps me provide strings for these reviews. So thank you, Stringjoy. If you haven't tried them out, I suggest giving them a shot because I think they're pretty awesome, especially the Broadway strings. Now let's move on to the cons of this guitar. The first thing is maybe not so much of a con, but just something you should think about. And I already mentioned this before, but the guitar is very resonant because this is just a giant open cavity. Now that's not gonna be so much of a problem for probably a lot of people, but if you're like me and you like to play your guitars late at night after say your wife goes to bed and she is a particularly sensitive sleeper, well, every time I play this guitar, I mean, according to her, I might as well just be playing an acoustic guitar next to her ear. So this one doesn't really work out so well in that regard. Now, a more serious con on this guitar, I think, is the placement of the pickup selector here. It's just so close to the trem bar that you can actually bump it from the middle position into the neck position. So let's say you are about to do a nice fat solo or something like that, and you grab your trem bar to do a little bend, and whoop, now your guitar is inside the neck position there. They would have moved it just a half an inch over, they could have beat the angle of the trem bar and that would have not been a problem at all. So that's something to consider. I don't know if it's a big deal, but it's certainly something that I've noticed quite a few times. And I think even if you watch the sound test, there's one song that I'm playing where that's not supposed to happen, but I kind of just messed with the graphics on the side. So it looks like I did it on purpose, but I didn't. Other than that, I think it's a really cool guitar. I have no idea if this is a limited run or if this is going to be something that they're going to put in their lineup for a while. So if you're interested in the guitar, I would say run out and get one because it's already disappeared from a few retailers that I've been checking on. Now before I go, I want to say that I appreciate everybody that's stuck around watching these videos. I know watching a 25 minute video is certainly not the easiest thing to do these days, but for me it's been very rewarding to see this community grow and seeing all these familiar faces and people leaving their input and, and just all the back and forth. It's been really cool. All right, I will talk to you guys next time.